I am almost out of gas, but given the fact that I've already drank the pre and I took my time getting into the car and I can already kind of feel the, uh, you know, the beta alanine start to tingle me from the blue shark gummy hostile hostility, I just want to get straight into the gym. So 11, oh, 10 mile range. That'll be enough. We'll make it. We will make it. It's not, you know, just as you should be in tune with your body for your lift, you know when you've got just enough gas to get to where you're headed. You got that mind engine connection. So plan for today is just an absolute methodical, technical, and well executed execution of chest that's kind of my plan and I kind of want to I kind of want to ch maybe not change it up per se but I really want to make sure I hit it from all angles so you know with chest there's kind of a couple of different basic styles of sets right with well let's just say let's just break it down from the the tree of sets for chest Right at the root of the tree, there's just your chest, right? The movements that hit your chest. Then it kind of splits off into two branches with pressing and flies. So we're very different. Obviously with a fly, you're gonna be able to get pretty much most of the intentional work and feeling in the squeezing portion. Plus you'll be able to get a really good stretch as well. But with the press, you can load up a lot more tension onto your chest, but maybe at the top, you don't necessarily get that squeeze as good as you could get with a pack deck or cable flies. So beyond those two roots or those two branches, right, you can go heavier, right? A set of like eight to 12, where once you do that many reps, you can't do any more without it being partials or assisted reps. So that would be like, you know, I try to do as much weight as I can on the pec deck and at around eight, you know, at around rep eight to 12, I can't touch my hands together anymore. So I start doing partials until I can barely move or with pressing like chest press or a machine or bench or Smith, whatever, you know, eight reps. And like at that last rep, it's, it's questionable whether or not it's actually going to go up. So those are pretty much, no, 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 no. And then you could go a little bit lighter. So with flies, that would be kind of more of a, maybe not an endurance test per se, but you're just kind of sitting there and you're locking down for 30 to 45 seconds of just, or well, honestly, probably just as much pain as you can give yourself in a sense. Like if I were to sit on the cable flies, instead of doing like 50 pounds, which is a weight where I'd probably hit rep like 10, and I'd say to myself, okay, we're getting close to done. You know, if I do like 25 and I go real slow and just squeeze it the whole time, by the time I hit rep 20, I can still do maybe 10 more, maybe 15 more, but I'm really just trying to put myself into a, you know, a burning sensation. <laughs> and similar with pressing, but I don't know. I don't feel like I get much out of light pressing, you know. Like if I do, uh, let's say I sit down in the pec deck, mid-workout to later and I do a heavy set of flies if I drop the weight by like half and do a light set I could still get a really good burn and it'll just be you know, more of a burning set but with pressing I, I kind of feel like I want to at least push the weight to moderate to as much as I can handle obviously for you know 8 to 12 reps so that's kind of some of the things that I'm thinking about on my way there but I'm just gonna get in there and once I'm warmed up whatever kind of calls me to pop a squat on that's probably what I'll end up doing so if the incline smith machine is well if the smith machine is open maybe I'll hop over there and do smith press or if it's taken maybe I'll just do incline barbell or maybe if both of those are taken, I could do machine. I mean, it's, it's kind of whatever, you know. I feel like it's a little, 
the way I talk about the lifts is a little bit counterintuitive because I bring up all these like styles of sets and like okay I want to do this set after this kind of set and then I want to do it like this and you know I want to do it like like I feel like I'm speak very specifically like I'm almost kind of making it seem like there's a single perfect way to do it like okay I want to do this then this and then one of these with a drop set and then this and that was good I mean it's you know don't don't read into it like that for sure really if I were to kind of break down what I feel like I want to at least accomplish during these workouts is just to make sure that each set is different enough from normal in terms of like what I'm doing so maybe I do a couple sets of pressing then I want to totally change it up do some flies you know just kind of back and forth between styles and make sure that each set is hard so the order isn't extremely important you know like obviously I do kind of prefer going heavier on uh, on chest first I'd want to do my heavy pressing first and then move on to like you know cable press for a squeeze or pec deck for flies but apart from that little framework where I like heavy pressing followed by you know more squeezing movements apart from that one sort of rule that I kind of follow for myself the lift can look like whatever, you know? And I don't think that that's a bad way to go about it. When you talk, uh, or when I see comments talking about how, like, I don't track progressive overload, you know, I don't have a chart where I'm like, okay, I did this amount of weight for this many reps last week, so now I want to add a two and a half pound plate and do it again for this amount of reps. Um, that's, you know, that method is never really jumped out at me just because it seems like it's it almost seems like it's trying to show you a way to push yourself like okay if I really want to push myself on this set then I have to do more than I did last time which I think is kind of just a little bit of an extra step because if you go in to the gym and you've taken your pre you have your specific lift in mind and I'm let's say I'm about to do my first couple sets of incline bench if I can, you know, feel that I'm doing a weight, which is pretty much as much as I can do for eight to 12, and I do a set to complete failure, I need a spot, then I think I've just pushed myself to as much as I can do. And by doing that on a repetitive basis, I think you just already are gonna, like, just by doing that, just by actually going into the gym and pushing yourself hard on your sets, you're just kind of gonna, almost sort of a roundabout way cause progressive overload because over time as you get stronger you're gonna have to use heavier weights to do sets to failure at that same rep range you know so I almost feel like if you have to look at a book to tell you what kind of weight to use to push yourself that's not my thing not my thing is what I gotta say about that but if it works it works so if you're turning into a freak or if you're getting you know weekly strength gains and monthly size gains over time and you've got a hundred training books which you're keeping track of then hey man if it works then keep fucking writing them up keep filling them up with all that data but what's up chatting let's uh let's just get in there and get started i think this is the max weight that's within reason Obviously, I'm not a power lifter, so the weight doesn't really matter. It's not the point. But if I want to do a heavy set, then it kind of is the point. Good. 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 Oh, oh, oh. I got you. Oh, oh, oh. It's all you. All you. Got you. Okay. Oh. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> 
Even though I'm on a new machine, I'm still on Inclined Smith. Instead of just a normal, straight up set, I'm gonna do kind of a pre exhausting style drop set. So, moderate weight, kind of a combination of a cable press slash fly. Maybe 15, 20 reps here, really burn out. But then, run over to the Incline Bench and with two plates, assisted by Lil Bro, he's making a cameo, try to just get as many partials out as possible. Or no, no, not, uh, not partials, but reps. You get what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. That's enough on my bench. I'm moving on to flies or something. Pressing has been, at least heavy pressing has pretty much been completed. Now I want to do some flies. And I like Pectec, and I'm probably going to do some next. But if I had to pick a favorite, I love cable flies. Real wide, stand right in between them. I just get such a gnarly squeeze. So, no other discussion points. Let's just hit a little more than half the stack. Listening to Scary Little Green Men, the Ozzy Osbourne song. I wish it had more of an intense breakdown. That's my only gripe with that song. Okay. Let's just do some pack tech next. Whew. I'm gonna come back to this though, but not for just straight up flies. It'll be a little different. For reasons beyond my understanding, this set of pack flies kind of calls for a drop set. So I'm thinking normal hard set first with you know, X amount of weight, then drop it by, I don't know, 30-ish percent and then just burn out a little bit more. Let's do one more like that. 
Maybe no drop set though. A little less than the stack on that one. Oh, but I think let's get a couple more sets with the cables and we're done. Much lighter weight than that set of flies I did here earlier. That was 60, I'm going all the way down to 40. So portion A is gonna be just normal in front of torso flies, uh, like we're all used to, you know, whatever, 15, 20 reps. <gasps> But then once I feel pretty much burnt out there, I'll drop the weight another probably 10-ish pounds and do bent over flies. So in the first portion, I'm kind of aiming for upper chest. I'm trying to feel my upper pecs fire. And then the second portion, a little bit more lower, obviously based on kind of my training history and what I've said about chest, you're gonna want to bias your upper chest a bit more. At least for the most part, I find that upper chest is lacking in a lot of people's builds. Your lower chest is getting activated almost all the fucking time. Every time you do a push down, every time you do like a dip, every, even every time you do any kind of pressing, your lower chest is coming into play. Your upper chest is the one that gets hit a little bit more, uh, let's just say infrequently. But after this superset, I think we're done. Okay. Okay. Let's find somewhere to pose down. Chest is fully cooked. All right, so that's, I mean, let's think. Two sets of bench, basically. A super set of bench. So two, super set of bench, followed by uh, cable flies, two pec decks and then one fly. So that was what, seven sets? ish. I can't even really remember. Just enough sets to the point where I feel like I've done enough work to stimulate growth as well as get a crazy pump, or at least as crazy of a pump as I'm capable of getting in that specific lift. You know, those are pretty much the two criteria which I would judge somebody's lift off of. You know, exercise selection, to an extent, that's kind of just out of convention, you know? Like, I'll see comments on dudes videos how you should that movement does not work your lats at all but if the dude doing some kind of maybe potentially funky movement is feeling his lats just burn like they're on fire doing something which maybe conventionally you wouldn't think would work then guess what looks like he's the one stimulating his lats and you're the one typing away being a hater you know so who's gonna make more gains that's all I'm trying to say there uh, but enough chit chat. Let's actually see what kind of pump resulted from those couple sets. Fuck. So that was only like a 40 ish minute lift. Pretty quick. I mean, it doesn't take that long, especially just to hit one muscle group. I mean, that's kind of just an in and out type situation. Now, when I've got a full leg day, or sometimes arms takes a little bit just because it's two muscle groups. But if you're coming into the gym and you just have one muscle group on the agenda, should not take that long. Oof. There we go. <clears throat> oh my goodness.
Oh, well, I feel pretty fucking pumped. I look pretty fucking pumped. I am pretty fucking pumped. The only thing left for me to have a successful equation is to get home. Well, no, no, no. Before I get home, stop at Kane's and get myself a Kaniac. That'd be perfect. Jeez. I mean, it's not going anywhere, but you're right. The hair is kind of starting to affect the pump. I'm like blocking my traps. Let me put all this stuff behind me. There we go. Ah, freaking nice old school, most muscular. Oh, I'm definitely coming back because the last couple days I've been kind of just fucked up sick wise. I think, actually, I don't know what I think, but my body was definitely dealing with something. Some kind of, honestly, if I had to guess, probably something I picked up at the airport. But lymph nodes were fucking, they were swollen. It was not fun for me to try to get food down either. But I give it a couple more days. We'll actually be back to fully bulked, pumped up weight. Because we're not full, I'm not fully carved up yet. I'm still kind of, <laughs> it sounds so funny to call that in recovery. But, you know, in a bulking context, I guess I kind of aim at recovery, you know? If something affects your ability to eat, that is going to completely halt any bulking gains. And it's kind of going to set you backwards. For me, and not just me, but anybody who's actually bulked seriously and eaten enough food or they gain weight consistently, you kind of have a fully gassed up weight. You have your weight where you're fully carved up. You've had a week straight of hitting your, you know, four and a half, five thousand 5,000 calories. That's your max bulk. And if you have a day or you miss some meals, you'll drop like two pounds. So it's, if you're really bulking hard, it's like a fucking legit battle. But if you're responsible, then you can get your meals in every day. And that's something I need to improve upon. The food has always been the limiting factor for me, bulk wise. So every bulk I do get better, but I'm still not a perfect lifter. I'm not eating every meal every day on time like I should, but I want to. So that's kind of what I'm trying to improve. But enough pose down, let's get in the car. Uh, perfect. Chest is fully pumped. Fully freaking pumped. So, kind of following what I was talking about a minute ago in the, um, during the pose down. Yeah, you cannot underestimate the power of food, man. You cannot underestimate the power of macros. I could come in here and for the past, we're getting up. Holy shit, man. We're probably approaching not five and a half, maybe five and a quarter years deep lifting. And if I hadn't eaten in a calorie surplus, at least like, you know, net for that whole portion of time, then there is no chance that I would be any larger than I was in the beginning. Well, I guess that's not really true. I definitely would be bigger. Right. If you take a normal Joe with a, like a normal dude diet and then you give him a couple years of lifting and he actually lifts hard, uh, he will obviously be bigger after that than if he hadn't lifted. You know. So, of course, the training is the stimulus that's necessary to you know, turn you in from a, or turn you from a, uh, you know, just a normal dog to a freak. And by freak, I do not mean 250 pounder. You know, if you're just, a t if you've listed for a couple of years and you've made some substantial gains, you, you are different. You are definitely sticking out from the majority of folks, you know. Plus, you get some forearm work in too. Even if you're wearing a baggy ass shirt, right? You've always got a little bit of beef with you hanging out. Uh, but, sure, the training is the, necessary stimulus to get the ball rolling. You're not going to grow any muscle without training, obviously. But you've got to couple that with energy, you know. You can't just have shit from nothing. You can't just turn freaking air into muscle, you know. I think that uh, I don't think anybody thinks that, but I'm just kind of 
saying some very uh, strong yet blanket statements. You need some fuel, right? You need what I kind of think of in my mind is building blocks and, you know, energy style. Building blocks and fuel in a way, right? So I would typically think of protein as building blocks. I need my 250-ish grams per day. You know, around a gram of protein per pound of body weight is a, it's a pretty good rule. I don't think you're going to benefit from much more. And I mean, it might not be that bad to get a little bit less, but I'd say around right there is the sweet spot. Then you need enough carbs and fats in your system. Fats, not only just to you know, have your body function, you need all sorts of cholesterols and whatever to make hormones and shit. But carbs... I think that's the real ticket when it comes to changing your training performance in terms of your diet. You know, if I kept my protein intake the same at 250, and let's say I had my fat intake at, I don't know, maybe 80 grams per day, for me to go from like 200 grams of carbs for a prolonged period of time to you know, upwards of eight, 900 grams of carbs, that is incredibly different. Because that's going to put me in a deficit versus a surplus. And a big surplus with a lot of carbs, right? that's what's going to give you that fullness. you know. Because inside of all your muscles, you've got, and I, I guess I don't know what the word is called, but you've got basically storage of glycogen, you know, some carbs and water. So if I were to go the next three days eating like, you know, 100 grams of carbs, I would literally shrink down probably like upwards of maybe even eight pounds or so. And that's not muscle. That's not fat either. It's just carbs and water that's like inside of my muscles. So if I'm trying to bulk up, then I want everything to be as full as possible for a prolonged period. That's what I feel is, you know, it's going to be a state in which you're actually going to be able to have enough energy to build muscle and recover after hard training, you know? So to put that as simply as possible, you know, eat a fuck ton of food and train hard, and you're going to see some results. Now, when I say a fuck ton of food... That's not just an arbitrary number. I do kind of like to get specific with that. I'm going to track my macros. I may not track my lifts and my number of reps per sets and whatever else, but I feel tracking your macros is imperative to actually, you know, making uh, not only sense, but just having accurate control over your build. You don't even have to be a lifter to benefit from tracking your macros. You know, just the average dude. I think he'd benefit. He would most certainly benefit, not only just from probably having a more consistent diet, but you know, not putting on too much softness by way of eating a little too many treats. That is, if not gaining weight is the goal. You know, for me, bulking up calories in, that is the goal. So I don't mind eating some treats. I, uh, I just got a bunch of donuts earlier. They were, I, I love the jelly filled donuts. But why the fuck would they be powdered? That just does not make any sense to me. I want a jelly-filled donut, but I want it to be glazed. Right? I don't know if anybody can really relate to that little gripe, but whatever. So, you know, I'm trying to bulk up. I want to put on mass. And sure, I'm going to add a little bit of body fat too. I'm not as lean as I was during the cut. But at the that being the cost of muscle gain, I don't mind. I do not freaking mind. Plus, add your daily cardio in to kind of mitigate that amount of uh, fat deposits. And guess what? I'm in the freaking green. You know, so sweets, treats, steaks, beefs, ramens, ice creams, eggs, turkeys, proteins, carbs, and fats, man. So if it takes what feels like shoveling down food to you know put you into enough of a surplus to actually gain weight over a couple of days or over the period of weeks i mean then that's really just kind of what you have to do the issue like i was just saying uh in the last car talk i was talking about how it's not so important about your split or your workout style or your rep schemes or whatever uh, or even like your overall training style like maybe you're doing more power building or bodybuilding sets and whatever. The one point that kind of has to overarch all those that you got to max out is the training intensity. 
So I could go in there and do all sorts of random shit. But as long as I went hard, I would stimulate some growth for sure. Or stimulate the potential for growth. Now I've got to couple that with you know, enough food to power that growth. So when I go home tonight and I go to bed with a full belly, all those nutrients and whatever are going to get partitioned at least as nicely as I could hope to you know, my upper chest, my mid chest, probably a little bit of biceps, a little bit of front delts. Uh, you get the drill. There's a reason why on all those kind of cliche looking shirts that it just says eat, sleep, and lift. Right? Those are the three basic pillars which you want to maximize for growth. And, you know, putting too much emphasis on a small detail of just one of them, it's, you know, it's not going to beat just improving the big picture, you know? So switching from doing, like, half supinated bicep curls with one rep max in reserve to, you know, cable, blah, 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 blah. Whatever, man. If you could improve your intensity over time, and you could eat some more food over time, and you could get your ass in bed a little bit earlier and get some more sleep, then those are the things that are really going to improve your progress. Regardless of what you may or may not believe your natural potential to be. Right? Progress is still progress. So, I think that's pretty much all I got to say there. I'm not sputtering, but I got to find a gas station. Pronto. ASAP. I've never run out of gas, but the amount of times that I've come close, I'd probably be inclined to think otherwise. So, it's winter break, it's holidays, eat some food, get a little bit of extra sleep, maybe just chill out. Right? Whatever you're stressing about, it might actually not be that important, and you're just kind of projecting a sense of value on something that is maybe just total bullshit. And it's kind of affecting your mood. You know, be a, the more zen you can be, I'd say the better your lifts are going to be too. You know, I love that uh, no matter what kind of random ass piece of advice I say, it always kind of relates back to improving lifts. So take that, with, take that how you will. But I've got back tomorrow, cardio and calves in the morning, and a ton of food in between. So I'll see you next time.